Okay, so in this video, we're going to explore how do we comply with relevant requirements. And this is an AUC section 200.24 through 26. So first we see that an auditor should comply with each requirement of an AUC section, unless in the circumstances of the audit, the entire AUC section is not relevant, or the requirement is not relevant because it is conditional and the condition does not exist. So what exactly does that mean? Let's go down to um, the particular interpretive guidance uh, for this and get some more color. Okay, so now we're in the other explanatory material section. And we have the two cases where, number one, um, the AUC section may not apply at all. And that might, an example of that might be if the entity we're auditing doesn't have an internal audit function, then we would not need to apply Section 610 using the work of internal auditors because the entire section would not be relevant, so we don't have to apply any of the requirements in that particular section. Um, there also may be the case where the section is relevant, but a particular requirement might not be relevant. And it might not be relevant if um, the condition that it mentions um, does not exist for this particular entity. And this could either be explicit or in implicit. So for example, there's a requirement that um, under a limited scope audit, the auditor has to modify the auditor's opinion. But if under the circumstances of the audit we're doing, um, there's not a scope limitation, then we don't necessarily have to modify the auditor's opinion um, to reflect that scope limitation that doesn't exist. So in that case, um, this particular requirement was not relevant to our audit. And so we don't have to comply with it. Um, another um, requirement of the auditor is that he has to communicate um, significant deficiencies and material weaknesses to management and those charged with governance. But if during the audit we didn't find any significant differences or material weaknesses, then we would not be required to um, communicate those because we didn't find any. So in that case, that requirement is not relevant because the condition um, doesn't exist for us to apply that requirement. So next let's discuss um, 25 and 26. So in these we see that gas uses two categories of requirements and they describe the degree of responsibility that, that requirement imposes on the auditors. And so these two different categories are unconditional requirements and presumptively mandatory requirements. So the unconditional requirement tells us that the auditor must comply with an unconditional requirement in all cases in which a requirement is relevant. And in these particular requirements, GAS will use the word must to indicate an unconditional requirement. So if the requirement says that we must do this thing, um, then we should do that thing unless, the, um, unless it's irrelevant. So next is the presumptively mandatory requirements. And so the auditor must comply with the presumptively mandatory requirement in all cases in which such a requirement is relevant, except in rare cases um, discussed elsewhere. But um, GAS uses the word should to indicate a presumptively mandatory requirement. And so the auditor uses his professional judgment to decide whether or not he should comply to, with a um, requirement. And in the case that he doesn't comply with that requirement, he needs to document it well to explain why he strayed from that particular requirement. But there are certain circumstances where that might um, become necessary. For example, there's a lot of discussion in other AUC sections about sending um, accounts receivable confirmations. And so when we get to those sections, we'll see that there might be circumstances where sending a confirmation might not be um, practical, um, maybe because the customers typically don't return those confirmations. So in that case, um, we would have to stray from this requirement and possibly do alternative procedures, for instance, look at the cash receipts after the period end. And we see that here that under circumstances where he does um, stray from the particular requirement, he has to do some kind of alternative procedure to achieve the intent of that requirement. So looking at subsequent receipts uh, from the customers might give us some um, evidence for the existence and accuracy of the receivable on the books. And so we, we only need to, or we shouldn't depart from requirements, but only in certain circumstances where um, the procedure that the requirement tells us to do is ineffective in achieving the intent of the requirement. 